All right, what is up, my friends? Paulo Vitor Damo de Rosa. Elite Spellbinders here. New Strix Saving Card. Of course, Paulo Vitor Damo de Rosa's World Championship uh, 26, basically invitational card. Paulo got to design this card for winning the Worlds, and Paulo's obviously great. And the card is great. Elite Spellbinder, 3 mana for a 3-1 flyer. Comes into play. You basically exile a spell from your opponent's hand, and that spell costs two more. Kind of mixed between um, like Meddling Mage and Thalia in a kind of weird way where you pick, and pick the one key card and now it costs a little bit more. And um, this deck is probably one of the best decks in Historic right now. Like, non-negotiable, definitely tier one, probably one of the best decks. This is Green White Company. And we've been seeing a lot of different company decks uh, lately. Uh, Simic Company, Mono Green Company, Gruel Company, Green White Company. Company, of course, is a phenomenally powerful card. Very important in Modern and uh, was a huge player in Standard. Now we're seeing it, of course, in the Historic format. And there's just a lot of really good cards in this deck. Um, this is a, a deck that can be aggressive. You know, there's like Lovestruck Beast, Kazandu Mammoth, Spellbinder, Luminarch Aspirant, but also has a lot of interaction, almost like Death and Dax's style. Uh, of course, Archon of Ameria makes lands come in tapped and denies your opponent the ability to cast multiple spells. The Spellbinder, obviously, we've already discussed that one. Redain is sort of like a Thalia effect. And Skyclave gives the deck an actual removal effect that's really, really good too. So powerful, aggressive, fast, Able to play the Great Henge to great value. Uh, just a really, really powerful deck. A lot of great sideboard options. Uh, this deck is really, really good. Let's just, let's just battle. Let's just play. Just play. Right here, right now. Just played an awesome uh, Prismari Dragons deck. You'll see that one in a video if you missed it. And here, folks, we're brought to you by Call Us Apparel. Call Us Apparel at Shop. Promo code Jim10. It's episode off your order. Call Us Apparel at Shop. Super comfortable. Super awesome. Super great shirts. Super fun designs. Even if you're not going to buy anything. Go to the site and look at it because they're all really fun. Check it out. Call us at shop. Promo code Jim10. It's 10% off your order. Call us at shop. Let's go. Let's go. And of course, if you haven't followed the stream, hit that follow button. Of course, watching on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. How's it going? My name is Jim. We're playing a little Storic today. We're playing a little Standard today. Then we'll be continuing our Bronze to Mythic run in Strixhaven Limited. Uh, my wife had appendix surgery two days ago, and I had ankle surgery two weeks before that, so she's on the mend. So probably my only major stream day this week. Um, trying to get some more YouTube content up. Yeah, I had a great Mog Monday uh, two days ago with Reed Duke for the Mog Monday Showdown. That was really fun. Uh, I am playing the Sweatsuit Invitational Draft Tournament again uh, tomorrow evening. It's every Thursday night. I am casting the Hooglandia Open with Jeff Hoagland uh, this Saturday. It should be really, really fun. I had a, t I had a great time great time casting that event uh last time looking forward to doing that again and our opponent looks to be playing jund food no inquisition all right cool they can take a land here if they want let's go they're gonna take one copy of scavenging ooze even though we already have another copy interesting that's a pretty big tell that they're maybe playing some sort of graveyard strategy. Nicole's doing all right upstairs. Yes, hopefully the Rangers bring up that that goon. They have they have a, an AHL defenseman goon they just signed. They got to bring him up and show Tom Wilson a lesson. And Tom Wilson's on my fantasy team. I like Tom Wilson, uh, but that was freaking dirty the last game. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. That, was, that was our thoughts. They can't take the land. You're right. When you're right, you're right. What's going on over here, opponent? Spiring Vantage? Leonin Light Scribe? Okay. So... Do we just play Scavenging Ooze? Do we play the, I think we play the Aspirin, honestly. Or rather, if they value Ooze that highly, I want to protect the Ooze. So let's play Aspirin and pump it. So you go. So, Tom Wilson is a player on the Washington Capitals. Um, he's actually a pretty good offensive player, too. But he's one of the biggest goons in the league. Um, he's constantly throwing dirty hits. He's been suspended multiple times for, you know, illegal hits, too aggressive play. And uh, last Ranger game, he punched one of the Rangers players who was face down on the ice in the back of the head a few times. And then our star player, who's like five foot nine, you know, he's not a big player. Uh, jumped on him to try and get him off of him, and he just like, the you know, Undertaker choke slammed him onto the ice with no helmet on, and like he didn't really hit his head, but it could have been it could have been career ending. If he hit his head or neck on the ice, he he probably wouldn't be playing hockey anymore. 
uh, which is ludicrous. And the NHL fined him $5,000 and no suspension. Finding someone in the NHL who's making $6 million a year, $5,000 is worse than doing nothing. It's like saying, hey, Jim, you said the S word in your stream last night. I got to take $2 from you. I'm sorry. I got to take it. You know, unbelievable. And the Rangers actually issued a statement against the NHL saying, yo, this is up. All right. You can't do this. It's not cool. So that's a, that's a story on that. We're going to spellbinder here. Um, see what's going on with the hand. Yeah, like, and like, I like Tom Wilson. All right. I'm also a Raiders fan, but I like Tom Wilson. I have Tom Wilson on my fantasy team. You know, he can be a good player. He's a little dirty at times. That was just ridiculous. So Helix, show of confidence, plum the forbidden. Some sort of like stormy combo -y stuff here. Uh, we're going to take the Helix. Uh, and we're going to pump the Spellbinder and attack with the Luminarch Aspirant. So I would happily trade Witch for Aspirant here. Yeah, and then Wilson, like, in the box is being, being a total douchebag, like, flexing and stuff. It's like, dude, you just pile drivered a player who's never been in a fight in his life and was is 5'9". And there's just, like, not really any, like... Like, it used to be in the NHL, there was, like, every team had, like, one goon. Every team had, like, one player who was just, like, 6'7", 290 pounds, could, like, kind of play, would play, like, six minutes a night, but that player was there to defend your players. So... Hockey has sort of like this self-policing... Um, what are you doing here? I want to kill the Witch, I think. I kind of want to like not do that because I want to put the Henge in play, too. This is a weird thought. I kind of want to trade, but I kind of want to get Henge in play, too. I'm going to take this. Um, so the the thing is that so hockey is kind of like this self-policing thing where you throw a dirty hit on a star player on a team, you know at some point you're going to have to answer to the team's bigger players. Like... Fighting in hockey is often seen as like a, you know, they're just stupid. There's violence for no reason. The But there's a code to it. You know, most hockey fights are, you just put my best player under the boards in it with a really dirty hit. Now you got to fight me. Like now you need to answer the bell. You can't just do that with no repercussion. And, and, the, re and the repercussion is not $5,000 afterwards. It's on a fine or suspension. It's you are going to fight me right now on the ice. And I'm going to hit you in the head, which sounds kind of barbaric, but like, this is like that's the way you police, you know, it on the spot, you know. So I don't know. We'll see. All right. So um, we get to play the great hand here, which is pretty awesome. And play scavenging use. Play land. Pump. Pump this. Uh, the hand's freaking terrible. Red jam. Right. Like knowing you're gonna have to fight a big guy on the spot, it's much more of a, deter a deterrent than a future punishment that's not gonna affect you bodily or really physically, you know, or uh, monetarily either, you know. So I guess they can like, is this, is this an instant, this is this an instant? I'm just gonna attack, I gotta leave the Aspirin back to block. They can just like pump everything though. I'm gonna play Henge and Ooze, I'll attack with all of these. So yes, that, that's, that's, um, that's, uh, that's just going out with the hockey thing. I'm sure everyone really cares about that, but, but yeah, fighting in hockey is, the there are dumb fights in hockey where it just like the two bruiser fourth liners Line up for a face-off, like want to fight? Okay, cool. And they just fight to try and like get the get you know, get things get the team excited or whatever. That's stupid. But when it's used as like a policing measure, you know, it's a self-regulating thing of like you can't be a jerk. If you're gonna be a jerk, you need to answer for it right here, right now, on the ice. Here it is. Like that's it. You know, that's that's you know, or you know, say up say a, a player comes in too hard and runs over your goalie. You know, that player's got to answer got to answer the call right here, right now. You know, so. Right. As it, I mean, there's, there's also this, the, the, the generic, like, uh, uh, statement of, like, what is it? Fines are only punishment for the poor, you know, where, like, a fine isn't a punishment for a rich person. They don't freaking care. They have money, you know? All right, so they're going to play a four of Lightning Helix on my ooze and attack, which is fine. Now we jump down with the Great Henge to win the games. This is, this is great. On top of the Great Henge is tight. Mammoth, Spellbinder, Aspirant. Yeah. All right, so... We Spellbinder. Um, we'll see what we draw. I might play another Aspirant, too. I might play Mammoth. We'll see. We'll uh, take the Show of Confidence. We don't really care about them sacking and drawing. 
We got Skyclave? Oh, wow, what a banger. All right. Uh, Skyclave, and this is a uh, spell at war ability. It's not going to show me the wording on ward? I want to see the wording on ward. Why would it show him? God damn it. Ward spell or ability, right? Judge, chat, help me out. I assume so. Uh, you could just take Light Scribe, too, honestly. We have two flyers. Let's take Light Scribe. This is better, anyway. Company, sure. Put a counter on the flyer. Attack for a bunch. This game is freaking over. Their deck's kind of cool, but... A lot of, a lot of Strixhaven cards. They, they're, they're basically applying Strixhaven block constructed, actually. Every card they've played is from, is from Strixhaven, except for their lands. Take a bunch. You're dead. You're dead. Yeah, Wilson was suspended earlier in the year, too. Like, I have Wilson on my fantasy team. I'm in a keeper league where you keep seven players. I don't, I've don't. i kept Wilson the last few years. He's, he's very good in fantasy because he scores points and has hits and stuff. I don't know if I can keep him again. Like, there's a chance he might just like, not play hockey anymore. Like, one more bad hit and he might just be out of the league. So, which is a good thing because he just can't play like that. But All right, so pretty, pretty, uh, pretty lopsided game there for the most part. Um, some sort of Mardu... Like prowess deck from Europe. What's fantasy league? It's like fantasy football for, for hockey. You know, it's just fantasy fantasy sports. So you gotta, you know, you have you have a team and you track all your stats and stuff. I came in fourth this year. You know, you track your stats and you know, it's just fantasy. It's fantasy. Fantasy. Fantasy sports. All right. So um, they're just like Mardu stuff. Like I I, I don't know what they're trying to do honestly. Like I mean, Gargaroth's kind of cool. Honestly, Thalia seems pretty good against them. You know, it's very awkward by companies. Um, I would say Ronus is... I don't know. Redain seems kind of eh. Archon seems cool. Uh, I guess you want, like, Baffling End. I kind of want, like... Maybe I'll, I'll bring in Thalia on the play for game three. Skyclave's great. Love Stroke. Maybe Ronus is kind of eh. I'm not a big Ronus fan. This is probably fine. Gargaroth seems fine too, honestly. But. I'm, just, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna board lightly. We won, we won that game pretty convincingly. So. American sports, a lot of no written rules. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, baseball is the worst of that. Baseball, the thing is that like, there's like kind of like an unwritten code sometimes and then there's like actual like full, like baseball is like ridiculous, like unwritten rule. You, you can't flip the bat and show up the, the, the pitcher. You can't like, you can't do this and that. You can't step out of the box if you're, it's like baseball is like archaic, you know, whereas hockey is a little more like this is just the, the way the game is played, you know, kind of thing. Uh, we can keep this. This is fun. Correct. So fantasy sports is basically like magic drafting. But instead of drafting cards for a deck, you draft the players you want. So for example, if you're, if you're from Europe, you use soccer as an example, or, or football. Football. Um, you know, you you would start your draft, and the player with the first pick would take Ronaldo, whoever the best, whoever the best football player is. And, and then you would you could do draft players, and eventually you have a team of players... And then every week, you accrue points based on how good your players do. They score goals, have assists, have shots, and so on and so forth. And um, and uh, at the end of the week, you either win or lose based on those points. It's very, very popular in America. Uh, fantasy sports. Fantasy football is very popular. It's a little less popular for other sports, but uh, very, very popular pastime. All right, so we'll just uh, baffling end here. Right, and, and you're, it's, it's, it's basically a, rot, a, rot, a rotisserie draft where you have all the cards at once. So, you know, we rotisserie draft Strixhaven, and I first pick, uh, you know, Leona Lightscribe, and you pick a whatever, Sedgmore Witch. And you can, you can do fantasy for magic, honestly. Like, I've actually done in the past things on my Twitter 
where I would uh, I would do fantasy pools for pro tours. I have people you'd pick one one card of each color, and whatever card top eight of the most, you get points for it and stuff. Pretty fun. But all right, so we'll get rid of this. Pay three life, not a problem. We've uh, prowessy decks have the problem of if you kill their enablers, they kind of fall apart. So we've done that so far. We've got the great hand. You got mammoth. We got lots of good things happening here. We could have played Mammoth and tried to play Henge next turn, but that allows them to kind of go off with their uh, their Sedmore Witch, and like we can just chill. I think I don't think we're in a huge rush. All right, so uh, probably just play Mammoth here. Well, the rule that I ran with the uh, with those with those the fantasy things was, you had to pick pick one card for each color, but the the card that was the most played was was uh, was got zero points. So like as a way to like balance it, or I'm sorry, the, the card that was most commonly chosen was negated. So it was, it was pretty fun. It was simply fun. If there were still Pro Tours, I would do that, but there aren't anymore, so. Alright, so we play Mammoth, we say go. We want our Mammoth to live here, so we can go land Henge Mammoth number two. That would be really, really good. It's so sick how good this card is in Historic, too. Like, I hate this card. I just hate it. Alright, that was not a bad turn for us. A format of sorceries. That's, that's, a, that's a limited quality removal spell. Just freaking format of sorcery kill up crappy 3-3. Three, three. Perfect. Opponent's uh, taking a time. Not many cards left in our opponent's hand. A Marius call? Okay. Uh, play this. So play this. I actually could have held that. Now that I think about it. Because of the Great Henge. I'd like to just like play this as a land if I have to. Definitely a really cool card. Sedgemore Witch. Definitely a really cool card. Ooh, Vanishing Verse. Gross. Poor Great Henge. Card answers, card answers Great Henge, too. Card's good. They only have one card left, though. I mean, they haven't really gotten any, any card advantage off these cards. It's just been, like, the typical Mardu, like, play a kill spell, play a kill spell, play a kill spell, run out of cards. We've been in this house for a year now? Wow. It's our one-year anniversary of owning the house? I did not, I did not know that. Alright, so we can Spellbinder plus um, Skyclave here. Take their last card. It is a land, obviously. And this is going to be a really... This is, this is probably wrong. <laughs> this, this is really aggressive. But, sure. We'll pay 6 life to kill our Sedgemore Witch. We do have Henge available, so we can get that, get that down to our gain life. Clarion Spirit. I love Clarion Spirit. Aw, that's that's things. It was Zibby's birthday. I miss Zibby. Put your Zibby's in chat, please. Jim D. Hammy. Rest in peace to our fallen brother. Spellbinder again. This costs one mana too many. That wasn't bad, actually. It takes the uh, thing. All right, I mean, we'll say go, I guess. They've got nothing. Oh, I'm sorry, they have they have a seven mana Gigantha. So they draw a land, they can play that. Oh, come on! Unreal. All right, um, let's bring that Gargaroth in. Now on the play, look at all these Thalias. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know, they have a lot of spells. I'm gonna bring Gargi. I'm gonna cut this Amarius call. I'm just greedy. I'm greedy. Check your month sub. It's the little thing right next to your name. You've been you've been subscribed for 20 months. Little icon next to your name, little 18. Goliath online. Thanks to resub Goliath. Yeah, we just like never draw land or else, do we? If 
Fine hand, though. Got Baffling Hand for a creature. Got Aspirant. Spellbinder's really, really good. Right. Goliath, thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. You great. Aww. Two years. Goliath online. Gargi. 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 I want to use my prime again one day for you, but I like the number three next to my name. Well, it will go away if you're not a subscriber anymore, so. Won't have that three forever. The sub Christmas card up. Yes. Right here. Here it is. All my subs get a holiday card every year. One of the many, many perks of being a subscriber. While we have this thought season, I'll go over it. Five bucks a month. What's it get you? Access to my Discord. The most important part. Uh, I do I do bonus content occasionally. A holiday card every year. We do fun games like uh, foot fantasy football or sorry, survivor football. We do an NHL playoff bracket. That'll be uh, happening really, really soon with free prizes. Um, tons and tons of stuff. Tons and tons of stuff for y'all. Only $5 a month. Best Discord, best community in, on Twitch, not even close. If you're on YouTube, you can also hit the join button. We do sub game days, right? You get the join button as well and join that way. All right, so they play Arcanist into my baffling end. And we kind of like just have to kill it, so... Five bucks a month. And of course, you also get to support me as a content creator. It's the best way to support me. It's not even close. Even subs in Europe? Yep. It might take a while to get to you, but no matter where you are, I will send you a holiday card and hopefully it arrives at some point. And again, if you're a YouTube viewer, right here, join button. Bam. Same exact thing on what YouTube. What is up, my YouTube friends? It's time to join the pile drivers. The Goblin King himself. Let's go, go watch the video. There's even an instructional video for it. We should cut the hinge. You're out of your mind. Out of your mind. Leon and Lightscribe, Blood Chief's Thirst. So we're going to take the Thirst because we're going to buy Gargaroth next turn and it will cost them six mana to kill it. And then Gargi's going to win the game by itself. Yes. Mig got, Mig got their holiday card. It just, it just took a long time. Might have got it in March, but they, it showed up. It showed up. All the way around the world. Is your shock? Gargi. Oh, daddy's home. Daddy's home. One turn window to draw an answer. Do it or you're dead. That's a land. The boldest attack of all time. The boldest attack of all time. I'm blocking here. I'm blocking all day, every day. What could they possibly have here? Like, that wouldn't trade off. You know? They want to trade Light Scribe and Helix for my Gargaroth, and I get a 3-3. I'll do that all day, every day. All day, every day. Yeah, sure. That was a three for one on our side. Spellbinder. Give me that give me that Gigantha you just put in your hand. Yeah, that one, I'll take that. Love it. Love it. All day, every day. I love blocking. I love making him have it. Thirst, whatever. Scavenging ooze, tight. Scavenging ooze. Eat your stuff. Let's see, go. That block could not be correct. I mean, what do you mean? We just got so much value and killed their creature, you know? Like, yeah, I guess it would have, it would have attacked back and gained a, a token or whatever, but like, I don't know, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, eat my stuff, eat your stuff. 
Give me that. Give me, give me that. Yeah, they, they, had, they had Thirst lined up too, right? So, give me that. They're at 13. I'm just gonna give them the old Oasis. You're my wonder wall. Go to one. Go to one. Wonder Walls Oasis, right? I always get that song and Jumper mixed up. And all the creatures are attacking in your face. There's some damage that I'd like to do you, but I don't know how. Third Eye Bind Song Jumper. Wish you would step back from that ledge, my friend. Oh! Game. Blouses. That 1 0 this deck? 2 0? I, I, I've lost track. Is that our first match? Is that our first match? I don't remember. A punk cover of Jumper? I'm sure there is. It's a punk cover of everything. Ah, I'm a monster. Ah, real monsters. Crumb. Fun fact, I saw Third Eye Blind and they were super salty. People get yelling and then play Jumper over their new songs. Yeah, I mean, that's just like the life of being a band like that. Like, you know, like, that's why I think bands should be forced to break up every, like, three albums. You know? What modern songs does Jim know? Long-legged Larry was a frog at the pond. Jump so high, you'll miss him when he's gone. Is, is your ladder off? That's great. So was that was that match one or match or game game one or game two? Match one, match two. I don't remember. Ah, oh, no, it's a stupid tiny pack deck. I hate this deck. Tilt. Uh, Esper Blanky and Discord for the back. Ten dollars for a deck tech. Ten dollars for a deck tech. All right, so. Land or else. How would you force them to break up? You just do it. Like, a band at 20 is not the same as a band at 35 or 40. You know, like, it's just a different band. And, like, you, then you end up with, like, that scenario of, like, play your song from 20 years ago. And they're like, screw you. Listen to our new songs. We've been writing new songs. You know, and uh, it just solves that problem and stuff. Oh, it's funny, Yogi, because I actually like the old hip hop stuff a lot. It's like, you know, like, here's some MF Doom and, and, and Tribe Calls Quest and stuff. Spirit World album? I don't know what that is. That's the new Aesop album, so I haven't heard it. Yogi Brown chat, folks. Yogi Brown. All right, we took a Spellbinder, sure. Yes. RIP Doom. Sucks. Brainstorm Fave Wishes, Maze Mind Tome, Omen of the Sea. Fave Wishes actually blocks. Actually, it doesn't block well because we have the uh, aspirant. I'll take the uh, the omen of the sea here. Maze mind tome, whatever. We're gonna freaking kill them, so don't matter to me. Yeah, a lot of good hip-hop stuff from Yogi and Andrew. Andrew just a big hip-hop fan. All right, so we're going to just play it all. Let's play it all. What song in my personal discography would I hate to play 20 years from now? I mean, there are songs that I've written in bands that I've played in 20 years ago that I wouldn't want to play now. You know, like... All right, you're up. I mean, don't find our moves, uh, master moves well, please. Bottom, love it. Interesting they didn't guess brainstorm. They could have like brainstorm there and then, like scribe one of the cards at the bottom and chose not to. Opponents are very uh, patient brainstorm player. Usually the way to be. I've been in tons of bands. 
Me and, and Joe Rosigliano in chat were in a band. We were called Yogi Brown and Say What's. Joe's Yogi Brown the Rapper. And uh, or Yogi Brown, I've been, in a, I've been in a punk band, been in like a kind of like a heavier, like, you know, tooly band. Um, been in lots of bands. My bass is right here. I've been playing, I've been playing bass on stream lately. You want to hear me play bass? Oh, the wire fell out. Anyone know any rancid? Oh, man. You're my wonder wall. So I draw Skyclave, which is insane. Get to take their their Maze Mind home. Um, we're gonna attack. We can eat this Spellbinder. We just do everything here, honestly. Just, just play it all. Just play it all. Memory lapse? That's annoying, but sure. All right, so we'll eat a uh, Spellbinder. Attack for a whole bunch. I pump the Aspirant. And they have one turn to draw a Mass Removal Spell. Maybe I should pump these. Nah, they have map. They have like scavenger. I mean, uh, like sweltering something or something like that. I'm gonna pump these scavengers maybe. But I also want to spread out against spot removal too. So, not sure. Not sure. Uh yeah, my, my old band Teach Me Human is on is on uh, on some stuff. Um, it's out there. All right, so we've got a tainted pact singleton control deck here. We're gonna bring in our Thalias. Our uh, Redeans, our Ceratops. I'm bring the Knight of Autumns too, actually, to try and hit these uh, artifacts and enchantments they have. Um, are you Hennies too? Yeah, I should maybe maybe pump the Skews. It's kind of weird because like you pump Skews and they have a spot rule spell and all your eggs in one basket, but they were at four at that point, so the other creatures were also legals. I should probably should pump the Ooze there. That was a mistake. I'm gonna cut some Skyclaves. They're pretty bad against them. Cut the Ronus. Um, I might cut the um, like a Marius Call. 4, 8, yeah, we have plenty of lands. 4, 8, 12, 8, 4, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 24 lands is plenty. Um, I'm going to cut a Great Henge. I'm going to get both Great Henges, honestly. It's kind of slow. If we, if we landed it, it'd be good, but like, I'm thinking we're more, more focused on just trying to kill them. So, get him dead here. Get him dead. Yeah, Basic Mountain looks a little weird. Honestly, not going to lie. Okay, okay. I don't actually know that Rancid song. Am I just too old? His hand's, hand's awesome. I played the I played the zombie deck, weirdo. I played the zombie deck. I uh, I think I top sixteen. I I still have the matches from that. I have to do a, a match review of it. I mean, I'll, I'll do at this stream also. That was Hyena by Rancid. One of the more popular songs. So we can, uh, dead weight? What a rude person. I tried Dragon Mutate in Standard. I saw that deck list. I looked at it and I went, what the hell does this even do? And then I felt dumb. And then I saw Brad Nelson post on the same tweet. What does this, what, what the hell does this deck even do? And I felt a little better by myself, but I, I don't know what that deck does. Thalia, what's with all these one mana rule spells? Huh? Inconceivable. Taplands, Ceratops. Oh man. All right. Well, a little awkward here. Um, we do have Archon and Redain and Spellbinder. A lot of this deck is definitely somewhat death and taxesy, where you have a lot of good effects like this. A lot of good like taxi effects and interactive interactive effects. Lurus to hand, that's the best you can do. Thalia, and we're gonna like Archon here, I think. We could Spellbinder. Make Lurus cost a million. Let's Spellbinder actually. 
Other hand is eliminate Shadow's verdict. Gross. And Luris. Luris, we don't actually have like a, a clean answer to, but we'll take Shadow's verdict here. Make it a plus seven. Want the aspirant. We get in. Maybe eliminate land Luris. It's a naked Luris. Oh, it's not naked. They have dead weight. Oh my god, I missed that. I didn't even know they had dead weight in their graveyard. That's terrible. Okay. Um. We could just like Ceratops. Just like battles pretty well here. All things considered. And you could have haste next turn. So you could just like wait. We play Archon. It just dies to eliminate. Thalia is the same thing. Redain's the same thing. Um, I guess you kind of want to keep Aspirin in play too, though. I'm not too familiar with Lars and the Bastards. I like know they exist, but I don't really know their songs. All right, we're a Ceratops. It's a little weird, but if we draw a land, we can double spell anyway, so... The back sign of Redeen good against Deadweight. I mean, like, it's 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 okay. It's not like it's like, necessarily good. Brainstorm, sure. Like this deck is better than Simic? Yeah. Um This deck, well, first off, Simic can't beat this deck. Uh, because beating Love Shark Beast with Simic is very, very hard. And uh, this deck just has all the answers. It just has like a lot of really good interaction while also maintaining like their really good aggressive stuff too. Big brainstorm here. Okay. Another land. One off of Shadow's Verdict. I guess they have Lurus in play. Gonna dead weight the shifting ceratops. Eliminate the aspirant. Sure, all pretty annoying. That was a pretty good draw. Let's see if they trade here. All right, so they they're gonna trade. We're just gonna end step company. They have shadows verdict now. They can cast it, but we just have like a company and a bunch of crap. So grim tutor. Don't like that. So, of course, they're playing Thassa's Oracle and Tainted Pact, and she defined both of those cards, and they, win the, and they win the game. Here's a company. Don't counter, please. Pretty sweet. Uh, Mammoth, Aspirant, Lovestruck Beast. Lovestruck Beasts don't really work because they're too risky. Just Mammoth and Redain. It's two biggest three juice. I was doing all right. Nicole's probably in chat. And now I can play a new Redain if I kill this one. That was a good draw, too. Let's go. Let's go. All right, just say go again. Please don't combo kill me. Uh, okay. Well, we're dead. That sucks. I I hate this deck. I hate it. Like, um, there's nothing we can do because we can't company response because then they would just taint it back to response. Um. I can company into Archon, but they're just going to respond to the company with their, with their spell. So, I mean, I'm sure they're going to respond with 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 the Tainted with Pact, but yes, yeah, so I I should have uh, I should have maybe played something else. I just can't. I mean, I can't main phase a company. Yeah, they just lose. All right. It just like I don't mind like like this this game wasn't bad. Like they 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 tutored, they found their combo. This game's totally fine. It's just the fact that like I played it when I played it when I played the tournament I played uh last weekend. We lost to this deck. They just naturally drew the combo both games on turn 4. And it's just like 
the no searching, no tutoring, nothing. Just, just you both count pieces, only two of each, you know, and uh, they are not resolving their pack fast enough here. They are going to rope in timeout. I don't know what they're doing. So, like, I think if, if it was only one copy of each, um, if there was a, uh, if there was a, like, if the, if the combo worked in a way where you could only have one Tainted Pact and one Thassa's Oracle and it was really inconsistent, um, sure. But, all right, well, they're just going to time out here because you the, the Tainted Pact takes a while to resolve, so... Don't you copy when they packed as a response trying to Thassa? What? Opponent is doing the faster way to combo, which is to rope out. This is the dumbest thing about this combo. They win if they time out? What? So if, if they time out, it just exiles the entire deck? That's so stupid. What's up, Killer Germ? Here is something you can't understand. How I could just kill a germ. When they run out of time, it auto declines. What? Okay. Uh, wow, that is uh, that is ridiculous. How that's how it works. You can time out. It is a Warwick base, yes. Okay, well, that was fun. Um, all right, so game three. I mean, we have plenty of things to interact with them. You know, um, we obviously have Redane and Spellbinder and Dahlia and so on. I think we'll be fine here. Um. Like the, again, the, if the, if it was actually a purely singleton deck and it was purely only one ofs, sure. But because there's two of each, again, I played a tournament. I was in contention for, you know, a good amount of prize money and they just two games in a row, turn four, both games, naturally do the combo and just like, ugh. So, what's up, doctor? How's it going, everyone? If you're sitting welcome to the stream, my name's Davis. How's it going? We're playing lots of things today. We're playing Historic, we're playing Standard. We're doing Bronson Mythic Limited. I might do a uh, a match re retrospective of that tournament I'm talking about. Um, yeah. I'm not saying it shouldn't be banned. I'm just saying it's like, just like pretty obnoxious. Doctor gifted us subs. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. All new subs from the Discord. Let's go. All right, I'll play. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Does Hushbringer stop Oracle? I believe so. Put him mulligans. Don't see how that's too much different between that and the perfect hand for any other deck. Yeah, there is. Are you kidding me? Like, the. There's a, a large subset of decks in the historic format that cannot beat that combo on turn four. Just cannot beat it. Because they're, they're not playing Thoughtseize or Counterspells or whatever. You know, or their their removal sorcery speed and so on and so forth, you know. Um, so like that's very different than just like play creatures and ember cleave you. Which is fine. You know, there are good hands that do that too, but Passage Goo. So it's like Legacy then, exactly. All right, so we're gonna we're Thalia here. I mean, our curve's pretty good here. Thalia into Redane's pretty nice. Thalia in the play is pretty nice too. Al Familiar says, hey Jim, 
learn through Twitter every other day, but you like old school streamo, want to send appreciation. Sweet. Yeah, we're trying to educate Chris Pecula on some uh, some screamo stuff. All right, so they have land, land, which is great. We have uh, a pathway here. I think we just mammoth here. I don't think we need to redeem yet. And mammoth attacks for more damage, so next time we attack for seven and then redeem. I don't know what Alexis Sunfire is. Elite Spellbinder, also pretty nice. Let's just, uh... I'm just jam. I'm going to pay a life here, too. Attack. We're going to Spellbinder here. Because right now, this, reduce, this increases the value of cards that cost four more. Um, and... With Thalion play, they cost five or more. They also might just have Tainted Pact into Oracle here because, like, they just haven't done anything yet, and they, that would be Stone Cold Nuts. So, if they have Oracle and Tainted Pact, this defends against that too. Ampere's the nut. Yeah, that, that band's really, really good. Orchard's fine, but Ampere's is really good. Memory Lapse, sure, whatever. It is hard to call cards against Singleton. All right. Um, Cry of the Carnarium. Annoying, but sure. All right, get it for five. Do you want to Redain or Spellbinder? They're at six life points. Spellbinder is lethal. Redain is not. Hmm. Uh. Take a little looky-loo. What do you got? Grim Tutor. Salundi Vision. Tainted Pact. Take the Tainted Pact so they can't buy the combo on us. Alright. 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 So they can't just draw Oracle and kill us. Endgame. Resub. Thanks so much. Holy crap. I'm actually awake while you stream for once. Hello, everyone. And they got no answers currently, so... They can, like... I know they can do, honestly. Like, it's a Lundy Vision for, like, a removal spell, I guess. This is match number two or match number three? I think it's three, right? Cling to Dust? Uh, that does not do anything. Because there are no creatures in the graveyard. Oh, yeah. Game. Blouses. Get off my plane. Stupid. That's a sorrowful combo deck. Yeah, that was match number three. Pepperidge Farm Resub. Thanks so much. Uh, this deck is really, really good. Um, you know, usually I'm playing more like fun brewy decks on stream. This deck is just really, really good. This is definitely one of the best decks in the format. Um, as it stands, Elite Spellbinder, perfect addition. Deck is aggressive, it's interactive, it's powerful, it's quick, it can, go, it can play a long game. This deck really just does everything. Um, good sideboard options, Rest in Peace, Stalia, etc., etc. Uh, deck's really good. Deck's really good. YouTube folks, I love you. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next. Your uh, your your word of a day is uh, is booth as oracle. Thanks, YouTube. Appreciate it.